Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Ahuri Canal looking on discussion for June 30th, 2022, crown 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for three tropical cyclones to be forming over the next couple of days, one in the Gulf of Mexico, a potential hurricane coming to Central America, and a new tropical system that could be forming near the Lesser Antilles. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have a lot going on today. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have Invest Area 95L. Actually looks a little bit more reminiscent of a tropical cyclone today as it has approached Texas. This is not expected to last much longer over water, and it is moving inland today over Texas. We have potential tropical cyclone 2, still not yet a tropical storm, though it is on the cusp of doing so. This is heading into Central America and then will emerge into the East Pacific Basin where additional strengthening is possible. And then we have another tropical wave out here nearing the Lesser Antilles. This will be moving north and west over the next couple of days and could also develop, but development chances have waned with this system in recent days. Looking at the overall graphical representation of everything, again, this is Invest Area in 95L, still only a 40% chance, but I do think those chances should be a little bit higher. Potential Tropical Cyclone 2, 90% chance, and here is this little, little wave out here, only a 10% chance over the next couple of days as this kind of meanders and drifts around towards the northwest. Additional development will be unlikely due to some pretty strong upper level winds that will be cutting across this area as the system approaches. Looking at Invest Area 95L today, again, the overall structure looks a lot better today than it has in recent days. We actually have a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity, especially on the eastern side of the circulation, which is located right in about this region here. And overall today, this actually looks a little bit more of a healthier signal. If we look at the recon plane that was in there, we did kind of find that, again, there is somewhat, the wind pattern is a little bit wonky here, but there could be a, a low-level circulation that might be trying to form in this convection over here. And then we certainly have multiple wind shifts that are occurring over here, kind of where maybe we would expect a circulation to be at this point. So this is probably at least maybe 60% there in the way of being near a tropical, you know, depression or storm. The main impacts, though, were not expected to ever be wind. The main impacts to portions of the coastal Texas region are expected to be some pretty heavy rainfall. Rainfall amounts here, especially near Houston and surrounding coastal regions here, could be probably around about four and a half to five, maybe even some um, amounts that are pushing about six inches in spots over the next couple of days. And again, the wind won't really be much of a concern, but there still will be some gusty winds, about 30 to 35 miles per hour, especially near the coast. And that begins to diminish off as you move inland. The slow pressure, though, will be moving inland. And while it will be weakening, still could bring some inclement weather to portions here of mid-central Texas. Switching gears, looking at potential tropical cyclone two. Again, today we noticed that th there's just kind of everything wrong with this that you could ever kind of imagine. First of all, the storm had a lot of convection yesterday. Now it doesn't have convection, but now it has a low level circulation. So to make sense of all of this, really that this is trying to generate thunderstorm activity. Now this has moved over land and because of the interaction here with portions of northern the, the northern coast of South America, it's going to take a little bit of time for this to actually generate thunderstorms near this center because that translation between mixing out that dry continental air, you know, from South America to now being able to generate thunderstorms on its own because of the, the moisture from the surface and latent heat release, that's going to take a little bit of time. If we actually look here at the visible satellite, the zoomed in picture here, we notice that that's not really occurring. There is some agitated cumulus in here. So that does maybe suggest that we are starting to try to get some of that dry air mixed out, but you just kind of notice there's a lot of dry air being pumped into this here. The recon plane from earlier today was able to find strong tropical storm force winds here, or modest tropical storm force winds rather, on the northern side of that circulation. There is somewhat of a closed low level circulation in here, so it's still a bit troughy, but there is at least enough of what would be classifiable as a low level circulation, but pretty weak winds at that. Uh, at this point, but this will be moving towards the kind of the west and then southwest over the next couple of days. 
This is actually expected to become a tropical storm later today or tonight and then make landfall probably tomorrow evening or very early Saturday morning along the coast here of Central America and Costa Rica. Tropical storm warnings have been issued for most of this area with a hurricane watch in effect for where the storm's core can make landfall. This could be near hurricane intensity as it does so. However, again, I'm not really so sure at the, this point that will be at hurricane intensity, but it certainly could be near. And then very interestingly, this is actually not expected to weaken much because it will be going over one of the biggest lakes here in Central America. This actually might be able to maintain or perhaps even strengthen what's called the brown ocean effect and it is very interesting but this could actually strengthen while over land and it is expected to remain a tropical storm and therefore there are now tropical storm watches issued on the other side on the east pacific side of everything then this will make that full crossover and strengthen into a hurricane as it moves away from coastal mexico so if we look here at what the actual hazards are again looking at the watch warning map we have hurricane watches in effect for near where the core of the storm will make landfall. And then we also have tropical storm warnings in effect for portions right up to this big, large lake here. And then, of course, portions of Costa Rica as well. Tropical storm watches surrounding everything, and these will likely be filled in with tropical storm warnings over the next couple of days. Looking at the HR forecast, again, just kind of to give an idea of where things will go and how strong things will get. Well, this is the HR forecast here. So this is the 12Z run. Looking at the 200 millibar wind pattern, so we're looking at the upper level winds here. Now, generally notice that today, again, the storm is now beginning to enter a little bit more favorable environment. There is still some shear around because it is displaced to the north from this uh, upper level high that generates outflow and is able to get a storm strong. In this case, it's actually a little bit displaced, so there is a little bit of easterly shear still in this region. However, this will be moving into a more favorable environment by the end of today and into tomorrow again. This is about 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is now approaching the Central American and Costa Rica coastline here and is under more favorable wind shear to begin to intensify some. Now, here on the H4 forecast, this only gets down to about 987 to 985 or 997 to 995 millibars. If we actually look here at the kind of the zoomed in here, we notice that again, this is about kind of right at about a modest tropical storm strength here. And then if we look at the HMON forecast, now the HMON is a little bit stronger and it is able to bring this to right near hurricane intensity as it does so, crosses over and then becomes a potent hurricane in the East Pacific Basin. And that is certainly echoed here by the H wharf as well. Now, again, Depending on how this interacts with land, this may still be pretty close here to Central America and Mexico as it begins to cross over into the East Pacific. So we actually may see additional tropical storm watches and warnings uh, posted for some of these areas over the next couple of days as this begins to approach. Looking at the overall impacts, once again, wind is expected to be a pretty substantial impact, but not the main concern. If we look at the overall wind forecast, again, generally speaking, we are expecting that wind could be as high as 80 miles per hour. Sustained wind could be high as 75 to 80 miles per hour as this nears the coast here. Again, this will be a tropical storm, potentially a hurricane as it approaches, and there are still some model discrepancies about how strong this will get. So we are still forecasting about 75 to 80 mile per hour winds along the immediate coastline. And that will begin to taper off as we start to get inland. But generally speaking, the entire coastline here within at least a storm's core will experience at least 45 to 50 mile per hour winds. And then in terms of the, the, the wind gusts here, we are expecting wind gusts that will be, again, potentially as high as about 80 to 85 miles per hour right along the coast here, especially in any of those stronger, uh, you know, convective elements that begin to come through later uh, with the storm's core. And then again, as this dies down, uh, this will still be kind of packing that, that wind punch here. So we're still expecting within the storm's core all the way to the East Pacific side, we're still expecting 50, you know, 45 to 50, even potentially 60 mile per hour gusts, uh, even on the East Pacific side of everything. So this could still be a very potent system and combine that with rainfall. Again, we are expecting at least in the order of about four to five inches along that storm's core. It's a very narrow path because this is expected to be a very small, compact system. And given how small and compact it is expected to be, small and compact systems are notoriously susceptible 
to rapid changes in intensity and strength. So that's why we still have uh, a very small kind of window for this to, to end up becoming a hurricane. Uh, but also with that small core size, we are expecting that the rainfall amounts will generally be in a small confined area to the storm's core that could be as high as five to six inches. All right. So make sure you take your hurricane preparedness plans. Make sure you're getting everything taken care of. And of course, I will stay on top of everything. I will have another video update later this evening. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.